Welcome to the Grand Finals of Game Changers 2023 Sao Paulo. In today's superstar matchup, we have the undefeated Shopify Rebellion, who just moments before this event have found out that their mastermind IGL Mel has to play from a remote location, not on stage with their team due to illness. And these Goliaths are going up against the underdogs in Team Liquid, who've managed to trade the first two maps in one apiece both of which being decided in just two rounds. Map 3 went convincingly in favor of Shopify, but Liquid hit back hard with a dominating win on Sunset. That brings us here to Map 5, on Valorant's most tried and true map, Ascent. But don't be fooled, this map was the most mind-numbing of them all. We're talking one in a million back-to-back -back thrifties, nail-biting clutches that'll keep you glued to the edge of your seat, and a masterclass in calling that you only see in the highest level of Valorant. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, this is not a map you want to miss. Now, if you guys want a tight game... Ah, come on and work, you stupid thing. I gotta watch this teats video. Uh, Jimmy, I don't think that's going to help. I get it, guys. Internet problems can suck. So how about instead of smashing a router, you download Gear Up, the best service out there for reducing your ping. This is basically pay to win. What Gear Up does is that they make your network connection stable, they lower your ping, optimize your connection if you suffer from bad network infrastructure, eliminate ping spikes, and more. Not only that, but if you click my link in the description, you'll get access to a free trial. I mean, why pay for a VPN when one, these guys are way cheaper, and two, they're giving you a free test drive. You think this is too good to be true? Here's my ping without gear up downloaded and here it is when it's on the numbers speak for themselves so what are you wait waiting for stop dealing with lag and download gear up for free using my link in the description i mean a free trial can't hurt right now if you guys want a tight game where every little detail matters look no further on pistol round shopify kicked things off with a map wide default where noya took a main with her turret sarah's recon cleared arches and alexis's knife cleared market and front b main Theoretically, this covers all the bases, but Bastarda found the smallest gap in the offense's default and found the first blood on top cat. She dropped back while Shopify regrouped towards the space their turret was holding, and here's where they executed. But Liquid tried to bunker down behind this sight smoke that acts as cover for the anchors to rat around in and isolate duels. These usually are a pain for the offense to deal with. Unless you're Mel. She took a leap of faith and cleared the smoke for her team, securing the pistol round behind two consecutive heaven kills, both of which were forced because of the one way she hung up on door. And with that, she's given her team the advantage heading into the following round. But remember, this is Valorant. Anything is possible. Oh, yeah. Shopify's plan for the anti-eco is simple. Run a tight ship and keep all their weapons grouped up and run it down B. Now Liquid are bundling up their weaker weapons up in mid. By doing this, their saves could overwhelm any attackers headed this way. Now Shopify took the free site, but I think Liquid's plan B was to flush out mid and set up in positions to play for exits. By doing this, Shopify are forced to run into the defense and take damage. Then they won't have much left to put up a fight against Liquid's first full buy. But Shopify are always one step ahead. If you look closely at their execute, Alexis was in the back, acting as a cannon, launching literally all of her utility over her teammates' heads as they funneled into sight. And then from this position, she can drop back into spawn and make sure that her team doesn't get pinched when they eventually have to run away from the spike explosion. She ends up forming a crossfire with her killjoy, allowing them to snag two freebies. But when Shopify tried to punish the third for picking up the sheriff with a double swing, uh, Jujina did this. Utilizing each other to perfection! Joji. With that, so Liquid have a chance. chance. Jujina immediately repositions to market, knowing that Alexis is going to take her time clearing the area. This move gives Liquid a small window where they can create an even 2 versus 2 on site, and Shopify now know that there's a real chance they lose this round. Mel and Sarah were ready to combat Liquid, who were playing for exits, but now they've dropped to house to play in a high-low setup that a Sheriff should never win against. Jujina and Issa walk up lane, don't spot Shopify anywhere in sight, so they jump in, knowing exactly where they have to be. Yep, and that's why they call it the Game Changers Deeg. These players do not miss with this weapon. And Alexis never expected Issa to just stick it with her teammate just going down. This was bold. Like I said, anything can happen in Valorant. Never back down, never what? The tables have turned, and now it's Shopify with a low buy, while Liquid have full loadouts. 
But do you remember this bulldog that Alexis saved last round? Well, she knows that her role in the team is to set her teammates up for success. And she was cosplaying as a catapult last round behind Hut, so it wouldn't make sense for her to have the rifle. Instead, she's being a good support, giving it to Fluorescent to go frag out. And Noya has also bought up as last round she only had a sheriff. Buying up like this is especially good on attack, as usually you and your squad are more grouped up and you guys can cycle through the rifle. Or you could have your teammates with classics fly ahead of you to act as decoys and you trade them out. Now with the two hero weapons, their game plan looks similar to last, Slam B. But there's a slight twist. Now Liquid are positioned in a standard 2-1-2 setup where Omen and KO are contesting a main, Jets floating around in mid, and Sova and Killjoy have a turret Odin trap set up to punish this fast hit. But is it really enough to slow down this special execute? Shopify erupt past the buy phase behind a KO knife. Flarsen immediately smashes a turret, and Sarah's shock clears the path of any nanos. It's not short slowing down though, there's a force buy. Shopify. Definitely with the force buys. Do not want to give that pace to control by TL. Moving it out, dashing for beautiful flashes, allowing Fluorescent to open up. Ah, uh, Teets, what was so special about that hit? Uh, Shopify just rushed B. This looks like my rank games. Ah, oh, Jimmy, you have so much to learn. There is a reason why this hit works so well. Look closely. As Fluorescent dashed, Sarah pinned her recon against this tree, allowing Mel to ult into spawn, and she used her paranoia to nearsight stairs and sign. And because this blind hit, Issa had no idea that Fluorescent was already barreling into sight. This well-structured execute 180'd this once hopeless low buy into a promising 3 versus 4. Team Liquid are trying to put the pieces together for the retake, but this one way shuts things out quick, forcing Jujina to save. The tables have turned again, and now it's Liquid who are the ones to save behind one hero rifle. Surely we don't see another thrifty. Right? Now the offense's plan is to farm up an ult point for Jet's Bladestorm, while these two hold the rest of the map with their turret. With that ultimate, they hope to finally find some solid footing in their economy in future rounds. Jet uses her Bladestorm and can save some credits, or maybe use it for a special play. But Liquid just aren't letting this orb go for free. These three are taking the attack to the attackers. As well as Daiki, the TP across, running right into the trap, but sort of dashes away, and Bezerra's there for the support! They run away to play the- Remember what I said before? When teams have low tier weapons, they're going to push out to one, take the offense by surprise, or two, combine their firepower to amount into a formidable death ball. Both teams traded flashes, which I think both missed and only half flashed, and a knife for a recon dart. And despite Mel teleporting across to double peek with her jet, Shopify just Hello didn't there. expect such a forward advance from the defense. And now Liquid have a big decision to make. Do they retake a main to snag these rifles? Their loadouts mostly consist of pistols, but they're up to players. But this round isn't really theirs yet. Also, fighting into Alexis might be a death sentence as she has full armor and a good sightline on the Vandals. Maybe they chill out and play in their crossfire setups. They immediately opt for the ladder and fall back to sight, not wanting to risk the player advantage. Now Shopify are shell-shocked. Their smokes and space maker were just evaporated, and the rest of their team are now wandering around like lost puppies trying to even the odds. Sarah begins to tiptoe in a tree and finds a sleeping Bastarde. She recons close sight and Shop take their time funneling into sight. Alexis moves through a main, clears wine, and knives hell spotting two more attackers. The knife is gonna suppress some players, but no information of where they could be. Ooh, but Sarah once again down, with the oh. sheriff, but unfortunately not this time, cannot get more, cannot do the Jujina cosplay. But Iza is there, almost hit that shot. Noya's low oh, on HP oh and spams from under hell. Coming back. It's a two versus two, and Jojina has just shown herself in tree by breaking this door. She immediately makes a decision to leave and reposition all the way through catwalk and up a main. This move has granted her a vandal, and as she creeps out to sight, she uses Issa's heavy position to her advantage. Had Shopify been on site, Jojina's reposition would have been good enough to punish, but if they aren't on site, they must be in hell. Meaning that Issa can lock them in behind Jujina's smoke. Be sounded either as Jujina's continue to oh, walk forward, she can but she's too close she down. Still it. armbots there, sticking onto the spike. Issa's watching that cross. Yeah, it's now at halfway. The jump up from Noya. The closing from Noya. No. She runs into bullets. No. The rebel clutch. Ah, <sighs> finally some normal rounds. Kinda. Shopify hit the next round with an A split, where Fluorescent tried to dash in a tree behind their paranoia, trying to pinch through heaven rather than through door. 
she failed, but Alexis followed up and they won the round. This forced Liquid to save, where they tried to pinch tiles, but Shopify were ready for an aggressive push this time and responded accordingly by gunning it up A. I mean, if there's four people pushed up in one area, go ahead and take the other. But they did sustain some casualties, forcing them to buy a lot this round, making it the perfect time to unveil their secret Bladestorm Bonanza. Shopify are in a formation to split B, but it's going a lot faster than you think. And now Liquid have just come out of a timeout, and their plan is to create a commotion outside of A so that Shopify are herded into this op on B, a tool that Liquid haven't pulled out all game. But Fluorescent gets the first step. As soon as a barrier drops, she cloud bursts, updrafts, and dashes into mid behind their Sova's Recon and KO's Knife for the fastest mid take I've ever seen. And in main, Sarah is droning right into Bastarde. This is such a huge. Uh, how did the op stay alive for so long? Uh, how did Alexis hit that shot? And how do I not have a riot gun buddy yet? So many questions, so little answers. But because it took forever to take down this slippery op, Noya immediately defaults to plan B and slams her lockdown. She feels like by this point, rotates are here and they're going to need the extra space. So Fluorescent pumps the brakes on her market crunch. And Alexis, who was cosplaying as a trebuchet to knife market and flash for this initial recon, has now snuck her way past Omen and is now with Fluorescent. If you're a Liquid fan, things aren't looking good. It's all up to eat. So uh, never mind. Uh, the defense have to save. Liquid managed to convert their eco, which was kind of a cluster, but they hit some nice shots and both teams are finally at even buys again. Shopify's plan this round, blah, blah, blah. Shut up, teats. How do you really know what Shopify's game plan is? Uh, you're just guessing. Well, what do you want me to do? Uh, get Mel herself and have her explain to you what her team's do- I mean, I can if you want. Wait, what the fuck? Finally, someone who knows what they're talking about. Get out of here. Uh, thanks, Mel. It's okay, Teets. I got it from here. So as we were saying, this round, we're bringing back a similar play that we pulled earlier this game, but with a twist. Now, Liquid have jumbled up their setup and are starting their jet in mid alongside Sova and Killjoy to help set her up while KO and Omen initially pressure A, but then head mid to Brawl as well. I'm glad we didn't have that way, and instead we blasted out of the buy phase behind a barrage of utility. KO knife and flash for close, market smoke, arrow on this tree, I ulted into spawn, and Sarah unleashed her hunter's fury. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Well, that's because this is the same execute we ran on round three, but Liquid didn't bite. Because as soon as all of his commotion started, Daiki let her drone go and it was never broken. Liquid knew that it was a fake. Now, ideally, you want to show at least three people in order to sell a good fake. Any less than that, and good players will catch on quick with the lack of pressure being applied, which is what we kind of did with my ult and spawn. But looking back on it, if we really wanted to sell it, I think that having Fluorescent here to smoke, dash, and destroy all the util definitely would have caught the defense off guard and dragged over some rotates. But now, Liquid are expecting the fake, encouraging the op to creep down mid. Because of this aggressive push, Basara just reads into this, but did not connect on the shot against Alexis. Dashes away. The gig is up. Bastarda couldn't land the shot, but she's confirmed her team's suspicions. It's not B. So, Jujina used this timing to slot herself into wine, knowing that that's where we were headed next. And Fluorescent dropped, not knowing she's close by. Paranoia being thrown up in the air, dashes away. Fluorescent! And that's why Riot nerfs Jet's updraft. In certain situations, this thing can be used as a dash, and floor is hard to swat. Regardless, we've got a main and most of the defense could be here. So I didn't feel confident enough to execute just yet because there's been a lot of resistance mid and A. I realized that our fake probably didn't work. Plus, with over a minute left, I had time to cook. So here's my mid round call. We have a main, but so much time has passed after our failed fake, the defense is probably three people here, while Killjoy is on B filling up the gaps. Wishing in now could be a death sentence. And on top of that, they also have a potent retake combo in Killjoy's lockdown and KO's no command. If we want a chance at winning the post plant, I had to send three players up mid, split the site, and hold this space in case they do ult. Being if we just gun it up A and it is a free site, there's no shot we're holding onto it. So we started to move into position, and Noya remember what happened on pistol. So she's jump spotting plenty, and we made our way up catwalk. Less off this peak, one and ADS on the melt, pulls it in from behind, and a pinch coming in from A main. The off out lands right into dome of fluorescent, but sort of forced to fall back. Both teams have traded out evenly, and I was right, our fake didn't work. And Lexi's knife has dragged Sova over for the perfect amount of time for us to hit. She goes for the plant while Noya and Sarah moved into tree to make another play with our claim space. 
forward. With support now finally from Isa. Trying to control towards the tree. Two insta kills. There's only no way left. Lockdown is not even needed for Team Liquid. How the how was Daiki so ready for this? Let me rewind the footage. Oh, I see now. So we did trade evenly to take A, but look, Ko is cosplaying as an oversized cypher cam. She saw these two waddle into tree and was telling Daiki everything that was going on. So while my call was right, you have to keep in mind that sometimes it's the small mistakes that can cost you big in Valorant. This time, we got knocked onto a half buy. Liquid capitalized, and so far, we've both been going toe to toe. But now, my team is one point off Lexi's null command, and we want to feed her an orb. But Liquid were prepared. On B, Killjoy and Sova were setting their op up for battle, while Omen and KO contested A main again. We opened up with their standard A sequence flash lineup for over the one way, ITP across, and fluorescent wide swings. But Liquid weren't going to give up this orb for free. Allowing fluorescent to move forward. The re swing out from Bizarro gets instantly punished. Okay, I promise the swing wasn't as troll as it might have looked. Let me rewind the footage again. See, Jujina sent out her paranoia and Bizera swung off of it to try and fight with the one way. Simmer down, Jimmy. But Jujina felt guilty for getting her KO killed, so she swung and trades. And because Jet is all the way up B and the alarm bat has mid on lock, rotates are already coming in to reinforce A. To tie up the situation. Such a beast. But wait, Bastarda called her teammates back as she wants to reposition as fast as possible. We just saw the op B, so there's a chance we wouldn't expect it on A this quick. I smoked off main to prevent a potential repeak while my team groups up towards A for another mid round call. I tell Lexi to hand the spike to Sarah as these three creep up mid while Lexi solo sells a fake into A. Now, quick pause. This is what a Pujan execute looks like. If it looks familiar, it's because it's also what we tried to do on a previous round that we broke down. For my team, a Pujan is when you hit a site with misleading number spread. It's something my team has always done, but we gave it a proper keyword after seeing NRG do it. The idea is when they expect you to heavy hit out a main, you actually have two or three people walking up on the other lane, ready to catch one of the A players either solo or with their back turned. Fun fact, this happened recently in Moist versus Sentinels on a pistol round. Actually, once you start looking for it, you'll realize this happens a lot more than you think. In a map as figured out as a scent, sometimes the smallest of details like having different number spreads can throw off your opponent just enough to win you a round. And that's what we did here. So Lexi ripped her ultimate, but we remember that an op was in play. Before peeking, she jump spotted, saw the jet, and couldn't go any more forwards. So she used her flashes in this fight for main. And because jet doesn't see anyone from heaven, Liquid started to get suspicious. Gina's so aware. We're still walking for Shopify. Contact. There's the first. Oh the swing on the left. Sarah instantly trades left. it. Off towards the top. Paranoia misses Bastarda, but at least pushes her we away. We both traded, and the op got heading. pushed back. Now, we went for the plant, but there's just one issue. Liquid still had their killjoy lockdown. Someone on our team needed to make a move, or Liquid were going to have the easiest retake of their lives. So, I jumped up into heaven, ready to play around my smoke, knowing that an op was just here. Also, Sarah joined me in. Allows that spike to go down. No tag, though. And the walk through. Mel somehow <laughs> even gets her teammate from behind. And Alexis closes in. And also sauce no okay, so I might have gotten a little lucky, but after realizing the sheriff was just camping in the smoke, I knew that this was a favorable duel to take with my Vandal, and Dougie just happened to get caught in the crossfire. Liquid managed to tie the game before halftime behind a spectacular sight hold. The score is 6 6, but here's where we started to pull away. Our plan was simple. We were playing retake on A with a microwave killer setup that also spots tree, while the rest of us were stacking towards mid and B. But Team Liquid positioned into a 2 1 2 default where Omen is passively jump spotting mid for info. Now, against a defensive setup like this, the offense is going to have to poke and prod real deep in order to have a good read. They started their dissection by pinning a recon dart in this windowsill and lining up a KO knife that clears wine and a main. Both signatures tagged no one, so both duos moved closer to investigate further. Bizera jumped spot sight and didn't see anything, cleared some common angles, but then she heard something. Killjoy's turret is tucked away next to Shroud, but what does this mean, you're asking? Good question. Well, because Killjoy has such powerful setups on this site and in tree, teams tend to retake this site as usually her setup can do massive amounts of damage or even get a kill. Knowing this, Kao called out to her team telling them to regroup to A. Huh? Oh, I mean if you have the lineup. Yeah, yeah, that's a way better idea. Good thinking. Okay, so instead of regrouping as five for an A hit, Sova and Killjoy are stopping in mid and lining up a cross map recon to help the execute. I mean, think about it. If we really are playing retake, you don't really need all five people here. You'd rather have more map control so that you can better combat the retake. This is a smart move. So both players moved out of tiles, scale up mid, and Daiki ripped a dart. It landed while her teammates come out. 
Bastarda broke the turret and dashed a switch, and Bunny hopped away expecting these nanos. Liquid's Reed has given them the sight, and are now going to put our retake to the test. Now, this pistol is actually designed to be a Flood Heaven retake from the get-go. I go solo jar with a blind, and everyone else jumps out heaven with coordinated util. I actually have a blind lineup for this. Our retake is inadvertently made better by the fact that Team Liquid is playing half on and half off. So we're actually able to get a 4v3 on site instead of a 4v4 that we planned a retake around because they're actually playing for Cat. And this is how it went. the top of heaven. There's that paranoia being thrown. Fluorescent dashing through. A second shot there onto Bezerra. But Georgina's still alive in the back of hell. There's that third kill. Once again, Fluorescent pushing forward. Tap on the spike. The fourth kill. Not another one. Splash the last one up to Isa. Sending for HP. Reloads the shot. Isa denies her though. But Mel is also there with the frenzy. To take Normally on an A retake, you want to pinch through both choke points. Otherwise, the defense can focus all their firepower on one lane and you lose. But because of our proper planning, Fluorescent was able to make enough space on her own to make up for no one going through tree alongside my flash lineup. And I just swept through late to clean it up. My job is a lot easier when Floor just doesn't miss. All right, Teets, that's enough for me. I gotta go polish this bad boy and take a break. You know, being a world champ is hard work. Man, that is a sick trophy. All right, picking up where she left off, Shopify convincingly converted the anti-eco, and here's where things get hairy for Liquid. On their first full buy, they created some mid-pressure, but then they peaked right at the Sarah's crosshair on B, costing them their space maker. That extra life could have been the difference maker in this what would be close round. Then on the following round, Sarah baited for Noya hard on lane, allowing her to get two in logs, and then they would later clean up the round. And that brings us here, where the offense's game plan's a bit better. Liquid are shifting their attention to mid control in their 1-3-1 default, where their goal is to destroy this alarm bot. By doing so, this should have spread the defense thin as someone would have to pick up this lane and leave both sites theoretically easier to execute on. But Shopify are world-class players. They can't be manipulated that easily. Their plan is to set up Fluorescent to be main with their new 4700 credit toy. And no, stop that. Shopify aren't just copying their homework. A sense meta is pretty stale, but Shopify are doing it better than their opponent. Just look at where Noya is pre-aiming. Without wasting any time, Sarah drones Fluorescent through B main. It doesn't tag anyone except for this turret that would normally discourage an op from getting on this line. But Noya has ripped it apart through this wall. And just like that, Without either player risking their lives, Sarah and Noya have done everything in their power to make sure their op is in the best position possible to get a first blood. But in response to losing B-Main, Liquid have taken mid. Bastardi breaks the alarm bot, and Daiki sends her dart, clearing out all of Market. But now, she wants to go deeper. Liquid are gonna have here. Oh, what a shot. That Odin is gonna be a new Hey, better, 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 better swing! Bastarde gets caught swinging. Now, I understand that she wants to clear Boathouse, but I wish he peeked into market with like a flash or something. From Liquid's positioning, this just looks like another solo play. And to make matters worse, Sarah has started mid clearing out any more potential threats. With this new information, Noya drops back and revives her alarm bot. Uh, kinda. By closing this door, it acts as a pseudo sage wall, uh, meaning the attackers can never come through this choke unless it gets broken. Meaning, in this setup, the defense can still hold out in a 2-3 like they normally would if they still had an alarm bot. And Liquid are heading right into the 3. Alright, now Daiki steps up to the plate. Better, 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 swing! And she goes down. Bazera's up next. Better, 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 swing! She strikes out as well. These three solo plays close out the side for Liquid as they elect to cut their losses and save their Vandals. So last round, Shopify did the same B play as last, and Fluorescent did this. The outro, the peak, the collateral from Fluorescent! Liquid saved, or at least tried to, again, but by Shopify pushing out and hunting like this, they've managed to ruin Liquid's economy for this last round. Shopify need one more to make Valorant history. After just showing heavy beam in pressure in back-to-back -back rounds, Shopify are shifting their attention to mid in their 1-3-1 hold. And Liquid are tired of being pushed around in B-Main, so they're starting here first to send a message. Bezerra lines up a flash, the offense double swings, shock dart, and within the first 6 seconds, most of Killjoy's bots are down. Now with this space, Liquid plan on storming B behind their Killjoy's lockdown. Uh, nah, -uh, Teets, they have Silva's ult. That isn't gonna work. Uh, yaha, uh -huh it is. KO is one point off her ult, which is another reason why Liquid would have took B main because of Sarah ults, so will Bezerra. 
But that's not all. Because the lockdown is going to clear out sight for them, their space maker at Smokes are going to lurk up mid late and backstab Shopify's retake. So once this suppression wears off, Issa slams her ult down and Shopify begin to react. Four of their players are ready to retake quick and prevent Liquid from setting up in their post plant. While the offense are planting, that makes one less person to contest this retake. And they're mostly all here, so the play can catch the offense off guard. But before Bastardi can even attempt to lurk, Sarah has droned mid, expecting a play like this. She turns tail and runs, but gets shot in the back by Mel. It's technically up two players, and strapped with the Hunter's Fury, this is the perfect time for a flood. Now committed with the site, Hunter's Fury now comes through, trying to get some pings towards the back of the site. It lands, it kills Mazzaro, only two kills away, needed here for Shop of Rebellion. Closing the gap, Daiki in the back, doing whatever she can, but she cannot. It's up to Georgina, who has clutched it before. Spike is down on the open, Florence gets the kill, the Rebels resist the push from the Dark Horse, and Shopify Rebellion are your game changers, champions! What a way to finish, so much doubt coming into this map 5, is that PTSD gonna affect Shopify? Look at what it means to Mel, 